Hello, hello, and welcome to another conversation lesson. Conversation slash vocabulary slash pronunciation slash reading. We're covering everything in these lessons. Let's jump right into it. I'll open our Ingu website that we always use. I always mention this, but you can come here and read articles by yourself or with a friend and you can have the conversation like we're going to cover in the lesson. You can do that with a friend, you know, and you can have a back and forth conversation. Obviously, in English, that's the whole point of it. All right, well, let's see which article shall we cover today. Let's go. Ooh, sensitive topic again for Americans. Guns, 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 guns. <laughs> All right, so millions in the U.S. carry loaded guns daily, experts say. Let me just make this bigger again for us so you can see it. Okay, we're going to start off with the vocabulary. Again, I'll read through it. I'd like you to hit pause after each word. Read it out loud. Make sure you got the pronunciation down. Be sure you understand the meaning of it. If you don't understand the meaning that they give here, then you can just type the word. Just type in loaded meaning it type it in google and they'll give you the explanation of each word and even in different context because a lot of times words will have different same word will have different meanings in different context okay so let's start loaded of a firearm containing bullets my grandfather keeps a loaded gun in his bedside table analyze to study or examine something in detail. Of the 13 countries analyzed, South Korea was found to be the most expensive place to raise a child. Representative, typical of a particular group of people or things. The study was based on a nationally representative group of over 23,000 Americans. Controversial, causing a lot of conflict, controversy or public disagreement. Gun control is a very controversial issue in the United States. Mm -hmm. Loosen to make something less strict. The company has decided to loosen its dress code and allow employees to show their tattoos in the workplace. Violence, behavior that is meant to hurt, kill or damage. Canada has high gun ownership but very little gun violence. Okay, so let's go right to the article. Again, I'm going to read the whole article. You can hit pause after each little paragraph and read it out loud again. If you're not sure about the pronunciation of something, just skip back a few seconds, listen again, read it again. Okay. So, millions in the U.S. carry loaded guns daily, experts say. More than one in 10 handgun owners in the U.S. carried a loaded weapon daily in 2019, according to a study published in 2022. 30% of owners carried their loaded handgun at least once a month. For this study, researchers analyzed data from the 2019 National Firearms Survey done by research firm Ipsos. It asked almost 2,400 handgun owners in the U.S. about how often and why they had carried their guns in the past month. The team reported that the number of people carrying a loaded handgun daily had doubled since a similar survey in 2015. And Ali Rouhani Rabar, one of the study's authors, told The Guardian that the 2022 figures would probably be even higher. The 2019 figures showed that owners who said they had carried their handguns that month had done so for an average of 18 days, while 38% of them had carried, carried their weapon daily. Hmm. The U.S. government does not collect data on gun ownership, but researchers estimate there were 53 million U.S. gun owners in 2019. If the figures in the study were taken to be representative of all the people in the U.S., that would mean that 6 million people were carrying loaded weapons every day. More than 70% of those who carried a handgun said they did it to protect themselves from other people. Gun use is a controversial topic in the U.S. where many people want to protect their right to own weapons. 
and the country continues to loosen gun carrying laws, says Rohani Rabar. He also told The Guardian that this could be having an effect on the increase in gun violence. Ooh. All right, well, we're going to first look at these three questions related to the article, then we'll have a discussion. So again, I'll read the question. I'd like you to answer it for yourself. Try and remember what did we read. Then I'll try and answer them. I always get a one or two wrong, and uh, especially at numbers. And then we'll go back and look at the answers. All right, number one. How did the number of Americans who carry a loaded gun daily change between 2015 and 2019? Numbers, I'm going to get it wrong. Do you know? Do you remember? Number two, how many Americans owned guns in 2019? Number three, has the U.S. been tightening its gun carrying laws in recent years? All right. Did you get all of them? You confident? <laughs> I'm not confident. I tell you when it comes to numbers, I'm terrible. How did the number of Americans who carry a loaded gun daily change between 2015 and 2019? So the number increased. That's all I know or remember. Um, oh, percentages from, say, I don't know, 22% to 35%, I'm going to guess. Um, yeah, but I know it increased. How many Americans owned guns in 2019? How many? Wasn't it like 40 or, 40 or 50 million? 60 million? Somewhere in that region, I think. Yeah, numbers. Don't get me on numbers. Has the U.S. been tightening its gun-carrying laws in recent years? Uh, tightening it? No, they've they've loosened it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, let's have a look. How many? Uh, how did the number change between 2015-2019? So where was it? Uh, oh dear. 53 million in 2019. Well, that's the second question. 53 million. I was in the ballpark there. Yeah, 53 million. How did it change from 2015? I can't even find it now. Team reported that the number carrying a loaded handgun doubled since 2015 but they didn't give any percentages it, it doubled okay i guess that's it doubled and then yeah 53 million the last one country continues to loosen gun carrying laws so they are loosening it not tightening it all right, well, let's go to the discussion question. Again, I'm going to read the question. I'll answer it in the way that I would if we were face to face. You can either pause it before I answer or after. If you want to pause it before, you can say first and see if we have similar thoughts on it. If you want to listen to me first, you can maybe pause afterwards and add, you know, add something to it or say I disagree with you on this or I agree with you on that and maybe add something more. Okay. So, number one, what are your thoughts on the study's findings? Um, I mean, I'm not surprised by it. I know in America, people love guns. There's so many guns. People carry guns. Um, I just want to see the other questions quickly. Uh, so I don't talk too much. Okay, yeah. Me personally, I'm just going to go straight into it. I don't like guns. I don't I don't like guns. I think we live in a s civilized society. We don't need guns. In my 41 years, I've never needed a gun in my life. So I don't know why people are so scared and so paranoid, like, oh, I have to have a gun on, and on me all the time to protect me from who knows what, you know? I, I just, I don't think it's necessary. Not in our day and age. Maybe 100 years back, yeah, but to, we don't need it now. Um, 
yeah, so I don't like guns. And uh, I, f I felt the most safe, the safest I felt my whole life was living in China. Can you believe that? Because there you're not allowed to have a gun. It's illegal to own guns. And just the fact that you know nobody's going to have a gun. You know, if if you walk in the middle of the night and somebody, you know, if you're scared or whatever, you know, somebody might attack you. The 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 worst that can happen, somebody might pull a knife on you, say, oh, give me your wallet. But if somebody pulls a knife, at least I can run away. You know, I can try and outrun this person, scream and make a noise. But if someone's got a gun, just like, give me your money. And then you turn around and run. And then he takes your money before you even five steps away. And it's, you know, you can't outrun bullets, but you can outrun a knife. Um, so. Yeah, I don't like it. That's just my opinion on it. So a lot of people will disagree. I never needed a gun in my life. Number two, do you find it surprising that there were 53 million US gun owners in 2019? No, I know in America, they're crazy about guns. They love it. Everybody wants to have it. Not surprised at all. Why do you think more Americans are carrying guns now than in the past? Like I, like I say, they have this obsession with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, you know, the right to bear arms. Um, it's, times change, things change. I mean, they, in the past, there was a right to own slaves, but they changed that, you know, it's because it's crazy. You cannot have that. In the same way, I think it's crazy in our society to own guns. You don't need that. Um, so, yeah, these amendments, it's an amendment. You can amend it. You know, you can change it. It's not law from God. It's just, it's if, if, if it's not working, change the rules. And it's clearly not working in the U.S., so they should change it. Number four, what do you make of the fact that the U.S. is loosening its gun-carrying laws? <laughs> Uh, what's the what, what they always use this line it takes a good guy with a gun to stop a bad guy with a gun but i'd rather it takes a good guy without a gun to stop a bad guy without a gun you know um it's crazy it just it doesn't make sense at all number five does your country have strict gun ownership laws uh yeah in thailand i think you can own a gun People, yeah, people are definitely now allowed to own guns here. I don't know how strict it is to get a gun. Um, I would assume it's similar to my home country, South Africa. There, you can also own guns. My, I grew up, my dad had like four or five guns. Uh, I just never had a liking for it. I, I don't like it. Um, but yeah, you have to... It's not that strict. You just have to apply for a license. And I think they do a criminal background check on you. And it's not too complicated to get a gun, but there is a procedure to go through. All right, further discussion. Do you consider the US to be a safe country to visit? <laughs> um, I would say safer than my country. Safer than South Africa, not safer than Thailand. Um, the problem I have with the US, for example, South Africa is a dangerous country, but 100%. There's no question about it. It's, I, weekly, I see videos on Facebook of people in South Africa that get hijacked or they're trying to look for somebody that stole a car or something. Um, but in the, in South Africa, you know, how can I say, there's areas that you should avoid. There's times where you should avoid certain things. But in the U.S., it seemed like these people can just go and shoot up a mall. You know, it's it, you don't know where to expect these kind of things to happen. It happens in normal areas. In South Africa, it happens in kind of shady or seedy areas where things are not 
although nowadays it's starting to flow into the suburbs but again there's certain places you know when you are coming home when you're standing at the gate while you're waiting for the gate to open there are these times where you know okay i need to be alert now but it's not like oh i'm in the mall with my kids and then you're gone so i don't like that that's one thing um that I, I i i always wanted to go live in the us when i was younger but now i'll go i'll go on a holiday to the us but i don't want to live there anymore i i'm very happy in thailand i've never had any fear or threat about gun violence or any kind of violence to me over here so yeah thanks but no thanks Number two, would you say that your country has become safer over your lifetime? <laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, the complete opposite. When I was young, my country was a safe place. But then again, when I was young, they had apartheid in my country, which was a very bad thing that, you know, obviously is not something that's good. But it was very safe. And even... You know, uh, if you don't know apartheid, that was where they had segregation, like black people weren't allowed on certain areas. They had to leave the city at certain times. So obviously that's extremely, extremely racist and not a good thing. But even the black areas were safer during apartheid than it is now. So, you know, those areas still exist, and they, but it's... Those are the areas that you definitely want to avoid in the night times because it's so dangerous there. Um, yeah, but it, yeah, it's it's become very very dangerous. So no, definitely not. Number three, what do you consider to be the safest countries in the world? Um, safest, I guess. Anything good? <laughs> I'm going to say the Scandinavian countries. Uh, like Norway, Sweden, maybe Denmark, Finland. I would think those are the safest countries. Yeah. Um, maybe Japan too. I, th I think Japan also is very safe. I've heard where there was a country that I I read an article where the the police haven't used guns in I don't know how many years. They haven't shot fired a shot in I don't know how many years. So that, that's why I think, you know, if we have a good society, then there's no need for guns. If the police don't even need to use guns, then you know we're on the right track. All right. Number four, what are the most controversial laws in your country? Ooh. In Thailand, I guess... Maybe controversial, I don't know, but you're not allowed to post negative things on social media about the royal family, about the king. Um, it can get you in a lot of trouble. So you don't, you've got free speech, but just not about the king. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind because I don't have opinions about it. So it doesn't affect me really. Uh, in South Africa, uh, there's not really any controversial laws unless you take BEE, Black Economic Empowerment. You know, that's something that they implemented in the night after apartheid to help the black people, you know, improve and get on, on the same level, on the same, give them the opportunity to, to be on a level playing field with the white people. Uh, but that's been going on now for what is it now, 28 years, and they still have it. So a lot of positions in my country, it's not about selecting the best person for the job, is you have to be black, and then they'll pick from there. So it's almost a reverse racism, if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm not complaining about it, I'm just saying what it is. But that's also one of the reasons why I left, because in my country, as a white person now, I cannot go to the bank and work myself up in, you know, and 
become uh, top position because it's not available for me. So I just left. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm not complaining at all. You know, you do what you want to do. You're in charge of the country. But if if you look at the amount of people that left the country because of all these rules, you'll see why it's going on a downward spiral. You know, you can't just look out for now. You need to look out for the future. Number five, what social or political issues are your friends and family passionate about? I, well, if it comes to political, I don't really care about politics. I like following US politics because they're so divided, the country's so divided, so it's kind of funny for me. I've got American friends and they post a lot of things on social media and to see how the left hates the right and the right hates the left and both think the opposite, you know, both things, things that the other party is crazy. Um, so it's kind of funny to see, which is, it, it's sad because it's real, but it's also like, you guys, you know, get your act together. Can't you see you divided, you know, you need to come together as a country. Um, my close friends, my family, no real political or social things that they are passionate about. Yeah, just don't mess up where we live. That's that's what most people are like. Don't mess up where we live. Just be okay with each other. That's it. <laughs> all right. Well, those are all the questions. A bit of a maybe a sensitive topic today, but we have to talk about these sensitive things as well. And yeah, if there's anything you disagree with or anything you want to know more about or anything you want to add, put it in the comments and then keep on practicing. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.